Part 2. Verdant Wind. Lone Moon. The Rose-Colored River. The Alliance Army successfully rendezvous with Judith and Alel. With the addition of House Daphnil's forces, the time has come to invade Empire territory. Preparations are complete. Now it's a game of patience. As they say, good things come to those who wait. Care to elaborate on this plan of yours, Claude? Can we really do this without battling my father? Pretty soon, Count Gloucester will need to gather his troops in the northern part of his territory. The kingdom has experienced constant infighting since the coup. They're out of the picture for now. The combined forces of the Regan and Daphnil houses will threaten the northern part of the Gloucester territory. Nardell, that retainer I mentioned, is going to draw their attention. We'll take that opportunity to make our way through Gloucester territory and launch a surprise attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. And are you not concerned about the possibility that I may tip off my father? The future of the Alliance rests on this battle. I'm certain you won't betray us. <laughs> I will ensure our success. I know you will. If we can win this fight, then our next goal will be to topple Enbar, the Imperial capital. I said before that my plan was to meddle with the Empire, but I'm gonna do you one better. We are going to defeat the Empire, once and for all. But to do that, we can't afford to slip up here. Bear that in mind and prepare yourselves for the coming battle. sing so loud that my voice is gonna reach the sky! I hope this song reaches the goddess's ears. This experience is critical. Professor, I asked to be on the sidelines. Why did you put me on the battlefield? You did protect me, so I guess I can't complain. Wait a second, you're hurt. Did that happen when you were defending me? Oh, I thought so. How could you be so reckless? Perhaps you'll say that that's what friends do. They look out for each other and save each other. But if I saw you getting attacked, I wouldn't risk my neck to save you. No, don't overestimate me. I don't know if I've told you this, Professor. I have a very impressive big brother. I'm not just saying that. He's strong, smart, nice. He's basically perfect. Before Claude turned up, people talked about him becoming the next leader of the Alliance. Don't mention that to Lawrence, by the way. He never shuts up about that kind of thing. Anyway, my parents have high expectations for my brother, and he almost always meets them. No one expects anything of me. If something's even a little bit difficult, I find someone else to do it for me. That's what I've done my whole life. Of course! I can't stand the idea of not meeting someone's expectations. I know how people react when that happens. From watching my brother, I mean. People force their expectations on you, and then if you fail, they look so... disappointed. 
Whenever that happens to my poor brother, he looks just devastated. So don't expect anything of me, please. That way, I can't disappoint you. You're stubborn. Okay, fine. Keep believing in me. I do want to support you and support my friends. I just don't want to let you down. I wasn't prepared enough. The earth nurtures the trees, and the trees bear fruit. It's the earth itself that gives us all life. O oh, Fodlan, land of plenty, bless us with the gift of delicious food. What are you doing? I, oh, it's just you, Lawrence. I was disturbed by your ridiculous blather. Must you recite it quite so loudly? And can you even call that nonsense poetry when it is utterly ignorant of rhyme and meter? Ouch! You don't hold back, do you? I didn't know you were so particular about poetry. Ha! <laughs> Maybe you have a secret poetry collection of your own hidden somewhere. That's absurd! Where did you hear that? And just what was that poem about? It seemed to me that you were praising the land. But is it not the goddess who nurtures the land? Should your praise not go to her instead? Of course you zero in on that detail. You really are a Fodlin noble through and through. Certainly. Aren't you? I'm not quite the same, no. Though noble blood flows within me, it can't change who I am at heart. Pardon? I think you had best clarify. Listen, Lawrence. You had ambitions of becoming the Alliance's ruler, didn't you? Would you like to try that for real? If you really want it, I wouldn't mind giving up my position. What's this all of a sudden? That is not an offer to be made in jest. I'm not joking around. I've been thinking it for a while now. I originally thought you were like a fox drawn in by the deer of the Alliance. But I was wrong. You're no thoughtless predator. You're trying to properly train the deer around you. Isn't that right? That is my intention. But the ambition is insufficient. To rule well a certain temperament is required. When we first met, I mistrusted you a great deal, and on my father's advice, I observed you closely. That is why I can say this for certain. You possess the qualities necessary to govern. A compliment from you? That's about as rare as a deer standing on its hind legs and doing a jig. Merely a statement of fact, one that is quite relevant to the future of the Alliance. The future of the Alliance, huh? You really are devoted to your cause. Depending on your actions, I may yet see fit to seize your position for myself. Bear that in mind. <laughs> I 
I welcome the idea. It means I can feel safe vanishing whenever I see fit. Vanishing? Do not tell me you intend to die in this conflict. You cannot shape the future if you do not live to see it. Ha! <laughs> First you compliment me, and now you're worrying about me? What have you done with the real Lawrence? No, I'm not going to die. I'm tougher than I look. Besides, this war isn't just for the Alliance anymore. It's going to decide the fate of all Fodlan. It would be cruel to leave you with the burden of uniting all of Fodlan by yourself, don't you think? Burden? Please. If there were none other suitable, I would gladly become a king. Or even an emperor. Well, well. I guess I shouldn't take Lawrence of the famous House Gloucester so lightly. Really, though. Don't you go dying on me either, Lawrence. We're going to need men like you in the age to come. The same to you, Claude. A world without you would be ever so dull. Hey, got a minute? Ah, uh, Leone. Are we to sharpen swords again? No, I came to give you this handkerchief back. Sorry, I know I held on to it for a while. You lent me this, remember? I recall giving it to you. It is a noble's duty to give to the common folk. In return, the commoner need only pay respect. That's nice. You left out the part where the nobles take all the stuff the regular folks make? Yes, the common folk give the fruits of their labor, willingly, I might add, as a token of that respect. The head of San Village offers his tribute in exactly that spirit, you know. San? That's... My village. You knew? Of course. We granted exclusive hunting rights to Saan and forbade outsiders from poaching. In fact, when we received complaints about just that, we hired mercenaries to deal with the issue. So that's what brought Gerald. Hmm? What was that? Nothing. Look, just take the handkerchief. I'm returning something I borrowed from a friend. Very well. As your friend, I will accept it. You know, I really wish you wouldn't think of nobles as always giving and commoners as only receiving. Friends help each other, without thinking about status, and that help goes both ways. Quite so. And when I require the aid of a friend, I assure you I will happily recognize it. But only with friends. In the main, I must continue to refuse assistance from the common folk. For a noble to accept would be disgraceful. <laughs> I always thought he was just stuck up. Turns out, he just has this grand idea of nobility he's trying to live up to. Oh no! I didn't even give him the handkerchief! Flame! Excuse me, quick question. Can I paint you? Oh, hello, Ignatz. What an unexpected surprise. I'd like to paint your portrait, Flane. For some reason, whenever I try to visualize St. Sethleen, I think of you. No wonder I've repeatedly felt someone's eyes boring holes into the back of my head lately. You're quite lucky my brother hasn't noticed. It would be wise to back away from me before he does. Although... I shall agree to your request, on the understanding that you paint me to be more illustrious than Saint Sethleen. More illustrious than the statue? Surely you mean as illustrious. Am I not the more illustrious? The more breathtaking? Well, true, you are a sight to behold. Though I'm not sure about the competitive tenor of that question. I'd expect you, as an admirer of Saint Sethleen, to speak more... admiringly? An admirer, hmm? <laughs> you say such funny things. Now then, would you like me to pose? Oh, I have many ideas up my sleeve. A pose? Ah, uh, no, no need. You can just sit down. Are you certain about that? It sounds rather... dull. How long will it take you? A few days, I imagine. But that's okay. You can just come by whenever you have time. Oh, and... If you don't mind, could you tell me some more stories about her? 
the stories you tell about Saint Cethleen are so much more vivid than the other legends I've heard. She seems so impressive, so fierce. I can't help but admire her too. Actually, I have changed my mind. No longer do you need to paint me as illustrious. Instead, paint me as fierce. Uh, sure, I guess. I think cute might suit you a little better, though. Did you not just say that Saint Cethleen had an impressive and fierce way about her? Well, if that is the case, then I too would like to look fierce. You're welcome to paint me repeatedly until you get the expressiveness just right. Rather, you must paint me repeatedly until I am satisfied with the outcome. Um, I'm not sure I can ever produce a painting that completely satisfies you. But I'll try. I said I would, and I will not go back on my word. Even if this painting takes me months, that wouldn't be a problem, would it? <laughs> not at all. We're friends, aren't we? I am happy to help with a friend's request even if it takes centuries to complete. <laughs> Thank you for that. Though, I hope it doesn't take quite that long. You know, Hilda, I really appreciate how open-minded you are. Oh? How do you mean? People usually try to hold me back when I get into a fight. Not you, though. I like that about you. What was it again? You like a good fight? Yeah, I remember it now. I'm not sure where you got that from. I try to avoid conflict of all kinds. That can't be right. You complimented my fighting. Said you were smitten by it. Hmm. Well, if you really must know, I want to live freely, with nothing tying me down. So your uninhibited attitude does appeal to me. You don't let rules hold you back. You do things your way and no one else's. That makes sense. I guess I am pretty impressive. You're really amazing too, you know that? Oh, me? Amazing? Shucks. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. I think most people like to force their ideas on everyone else. They'll tell someone off if they don't like how the other person is living. Try to make them change, even if they don't want to. You're different, though. You let people live however they want. There aren't a lot of people like you in the world. Oh, stop. You're going to make me blush. <laughs> no one's ever paid me so many compliments. Come on, really? My big brother liked to tell me how lazy and careless I was. I've gotten scolds aplenty. But compliments, I'm not accustomed to. That's surprising. But I don't think you should let it bother you so much. You shouldn't let anyone change you, or else you'll end up losing the qualities that make you so great. I suppose you're right. Wow. Thanks, Kaspar. We should live our own lives and stop worrying about others' opinions. <laughs> came from the territory of House Daphnel. It's not easy to leave one's home, but it had to be done. Judith asked us so earnestly, there was no way we could have refused. We can trust you, right? I'd hate to end up just another pointless death. Things have gotten a lot more interesting since we joined up with Judith, haven't they? Anyone who casually treats Claude like he's just some kid is not a person to be trifled with. <laughs> I think Captain Gerald would have liked her. I hope someday I can be as strong, kind, and level-headed as her. If we can suppress this Murden, we can invade into the Empire, right? I was in the Empire. Now, I will be an enemy. I am having strange feelings. It is with ease that an ally turns into an enemy.
Nor is it kind to you if you're a recluse. By the time you realize what's going on, you're already under attack. And if you're off by yourself, you can get killed with no one ever even finding out. Oh, that'd be awful. Just terrible. Okay, Professor, I get it. I know I'll have to come out. I had an encounter with Lord Gwendal. How many years ago was it? Back before the Academy, I met this girl who I fell madly in love with. And her dad tried to kill me. I suppose he just tried to scare me. But I was sure I was gonna die. Oh yeah, her dad? Lord Gwendal. Crazy, right? I never thought I'd seriously be trying to kill the guy in battle. I kind of don't know how to make sense of it. No. The Great Bridge of Murden isn't just a bridge. It has the features of a fortress. I believe it was built for military purposes by the first leader of the Adrestian Empire. In other words, it's even older than the monastery. So if we occupy the Great Bridge, we'll have to search it from top to bottom. are worried. I want to ease their minds as soon as possible, Professor. Let's work together to find her. <laughs> I've been away from Garrig Mach for a while, but I came back when I heard the rumors of what you were doing. The scars of five years ago may still be raw, but it's nice to be back. Anyway, I'm going to start a business here again, so I look forward to your patronage. Professor? Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. I was talking to some of the Daphnal soldiers earlier, and it seems that Judith has a weakness. But they wouldn't tell me what it is. I got the feeling they didn't appreciate the question. Pardon me for being curious. That said, maybe keep this to yourself. Not that she terrifies me to my soul, but I'd hate to get on her bad side. What do you require? Farewell. Welcome. This one? Thank you. This one? Thank you. Please come again. Hello there. This one, yes? I think this one, yes. I th this one, yes. I th this one, yes. I think this one, yes. I think. This one, yes. I thank you. This one, yes. I think 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 this one, yes. I thank you. This one, yes. I thank you.
This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Sweetheart. It looks like people are slowly starting to come back to the town. I guess they feel safe now that you and the Knights of Saros have returned. Peddlers have become more common too, so there'll be food and supplies available. After being run down for all those years, it's really becoming livable again. Excuse me, could you do me a favor? from Judith? I'm full for once. I've got so much energy. Let me at that great bridge of Murden. I'll bust it down myself. Oh, but then how do we cross? Smell. Mm, it's amazing. My fave, in fact. Do you like it too? This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! is delicious! My absolute favorite! I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. Looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Oh, my favorite food. You've got to try this. I like 
this dish. It was my father's favorite. This is my most favorite dish of all. I love it almost as much as Crestology itself. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I would be liking that greatly. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. Delicious! After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. Delicious food really takes my worries away. Ooh, <laughs> I love this stuff. Did you know that? <laughs> ah, yes, cooking. I'm far from an expert, but I'll do what I can. I want to make sure the final product looks colorful, as well as appetizing. I get it. there return soon please hey welcome you have a good eye a pleasure doing business with you come again Something appears to be wrong with my throat. You look like a cat that's been sprayed with water. What? You don't think I should sing the high notes? Hello 
there. This one, yes. I this one, yes. I this one, yes. I this one, yes. I thank you. 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 This one, yes. I thank this one, yes. This one, yes. I thank you. 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 This one, yes. I this one, yes. I this one, yes. I thank you. This one, yes. This one, yes. This one, yes. I thank you. This one, yes. I thank you. Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. A pleasure doing business. You have a good eye. A pleasure doing business. Come again. Really now? There's a... I hope they... Welcome. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. 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 Come back soon. There is always more to learn. Thanks, Professor. That's really nice of you to say. I... 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 Yeah, I understand now. I 
dump. Oh, I was just lucky. Hey, can I ask you something? Huh, I see. Teacher. Which means that there are some elements of your power that cannot be explained by current theory. Although this may lead to a discovery that alters the very fabric of Crest research. Oh, pardon me, Professor. I became lost in thought, and I do tend to ramble. I suggest we call it a day. Do you concur? It seems that I have gotten carried away again. My apologies. I know you were quite busy. I become so energized around you. When we get deep into the research, why, I feel 20 years younger. That said, perhaps we should discuss things unrelated to crests from time to time. Some sort of silly, lighthearted topic might be nice, eh? I'm not especially skilled at small talk, alas. Let me see. Perhaps we should discuss... Hmm. I know. Food. Not my strong suit, the culinary arts, but I do enjoy a good meal. Which kind of food do you prefer, Professor? Sweet or spicy? Same as myself. Yes, indeed. Oh, now my stomach is growling. An old colleague of mine theorized that those who bear crests favor sweet flavors over spicy. She suggested that the crest exerts some manner of influence over... Oh, there I go again. How embarrassing. 
We were supposed to be avoiding talk of crests, weren't we? Terrible habit of mine, finding a way to turn any conversation towards crests. I really should find a way to stop that. That is kind of you, Professor, but it's all right. If you were to lose your patience with me, it could have an incalculable impact on my research. That sort of thing has happened in the past, you know. Back when I was still in the Empire, at first, any lady I was spending time with would titter and say she didn't mind if I talked about crests. But at some point, she would always become fed up and stop listening to what I had to say. In the end, Invariably, while I was particularly focused on my research, she would write to say we were done. You may be a man, but I still don't wish for you to grow tired of my company. Professor. Do you remember what we talked about before? About doing my best to not do my best? Well, I've been pretty busy recently, and despite my best efforts, I've been trying way too hard. I was busy all day yesterday with training and work. I just couldn't help myself. That's why I decided to take a day off today. It's just, now that I have a day off, I don't know what to do with myself. Please, you have to help me. What should I do? I can't relax if I'm doing nothing. I need something to keep me occupied or I'll go nuts. I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm cut out for not doing my best. Oh! You're a professor. You must know some secret technique for deep relaxation, right? If you do, please teach me. I'm begging you. I'm at my wit's end. Got it. I'll try that right now. Mm, this candy is so sweet and delicious. And it goes so well with piping hot tea. Oh, and speaking of the tea, your brewing skills are incredible. I'd love to be able to make such nice tea, but... Oh, Professor, will you teach me how to brew tea like this? I'll do my best to learn, and then I'll make delicious tea for you as thanks. Oh, uh, sorry. Back to my old tricks, it seems. So, why is it so difficult to not do my best? I try and try to not try, but it just doesn't work. Professor? You're right. Doing nothing is just not my style. To be myself, I've got to do my best every day. Okay. Then you really must teach me how to make such delicious tea. You will, won't you? Please. Oh, and also, well, thank you. You've listened to me and helped me face my troubles. <laughs> now I feel like I can talk to you about anything. Honestly, I wish we could go on drinking tea like this forever. Professor, I'm here. I wanted to take you up on your invitation. I'm not very discerning, but I do love this kind of tea. You have my thanks. This flavor is splendid. Uh, yes? Yes? I get it. 
I need to keep training. I know a brush and canvas aren't enough to protect you. I get it. All right. Thank you so much, Professor. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Professor. Some people look smarter if they're wearing glasses. Not me, though. What a lovely fragrance. Professor. Professor! Hmm. I wish I wasn't so shy all the time. Thank you for the delicious tea. I'd be happy to join you again whenever you like. With you and your excellent skills at my side, I could probably slack off a bit. Nonsense. Aren't you supposed to be the one with these superior skills? You only ever appreciate me at times like these. Well, let's end this together. Good results. It seems my nipping at Claude's heels has had an effect. And nipping at my heels counts as working harder? Could be useful. I'd never have learned this back in my room. I understand. I'll do my best with this. Is this what success feels like? Eating? In the dining hall. You? What do you mean? The dining hall's where I do most of my eating. If only the old version of you could hear you say that. It seems to me you've taken more care with your appearance of late, too. For once, you aren't covered in gravy and oil from head to toe. I'm impressed. Of course not, Ingrid. A proper night has to be neat and tidy. All right, what have you done with Raphael? It's all thanks to you. You said I had to clean up if I wanted to be a knight, so I started being more careful. Do you think I have what it takes now? You've certainly become more knightly than before. But there's plenty yet to do to become a proper knight. It's not as simple as eating where you're meant to and not being covered in gravy. <laughs> Maybe I'd have a better chance if I just married you. Uh, what does that have to do with anything? You're real cultured, that's all. You already taught me to be neat and tidy. I figured you could teach me a lot more about being a proper knight if I always had you around. That would be quite the undertaking for me. Listen, Raphael, that's sweet of you. However, as I've said before, I've no intention to marry. Let's cast aside this talk of marriage and instead embolden one another to be the best knights we can be. You're right. Probably a better idea to just embolden each other instead. As long as I still get your help with becoming a proper knight. While you're working to be more proper, I'll be working to strengthen myself, that I might become a greater knight than you. Huh. I don't know about that. I'm pretty tough. But, I guess if anyone could beat me, it'd probably be you, Ingrid. Guaranteed. Thank you, Raphael. That means a lot to me. <laughs> Thank you. 
I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. This is my absolute favorite. How did you know, Professor? Delicious food really takes my worries away. That looks appetizing. This dish. It was my father's favorite. This is my most favorite dish of all. I love it almost as much as Crestology itself. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking! I would happily eat this every day! my compliments to the chef delicious after a scrumptious meal like that I feel that I can really seize the day Looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too eating alone is nice but I think I prefer eating with a friend <laughs> cooking is easy once you understand the basics Use 
use that vegetable. Technically, it's edible, but it's not highly favored. I see. There's someone who's slightly off. Oh, well, that adds some color, I suppose. Is this necessary? I'll sing if I must. Professor. It's thanks to you that I'm here now. I owe you, Professor. You saved my life. I swear I'll do all I can to repay that debt. This one? You're all set. See you again soon. Hello there. Judith is a wonderful person. So strong and confident as well. Looking upon her, I am sharply reminded of my mother. Very much so. Both brilliantly bright and positive, like a warm ray of light. I... lost my mother long ago. I miss her desperately. I would like to believe that I have always made my own decisions. Even so... I cannot deny that some small part of me has always been aware of my father's wishes. Now here I am, concealing our plan, Claude's plan, from his sight. Quite the contrary, honestly. I feel as though a fog has finally lifted from my eyes. In this fight, I will finally stand upon my own two feet, independent of my father's influence. Originally from the Empire, it seems no one trusts me with any important tasks. Fine by me. Honestly, I bet they're watching my every move to make sure I can be trusted. I knew it. War makes people crazy, huh? Judith. Just as I'd heard of her, she was an upstanding person. The same Daphnal blood runs through my veins, and yet I feel as though I am nothing like her. 
I am but a phantom of what could be. You think so? Wow, thank you. I don't know where he recruited that man, but Claude's got an eye for great talent. I'm talking about his retainer, Nardell. I've only spoken with him briefly, but he seems to have a fair amount of both brains and brawn, with the skills to match. But there's something about him I can't quite place. Like I've somehow heard of him before. Of course. I'd heard of the hero of Daphne, but that was the first time I've met her in person. She's the head of a prestigious noble family? Just like Claude. The Alliance nobility is so... odd. Kind of, but I don't mean that in a bad way. You won't find such big-hearted nobles elsewhere. Plus, Judith can drink with the best of them. A woman after my own heart. If our plan succeeds, we'll arrive at the Great Bridge of Murden unscathed. The important part is what happens next. We're evenly matched in terms of military power, more or less. So if we can just launch a surprise attack... I wouldn't be so sure. That bridge is almost like a fortress. The defense there is rock solid. But that's why you're here, Teach. No matter the odds, you're the wild card we need to win. The Aramid River separates the Empire and Alliance. It's the largest river in Fodlan. Sometimes it'll flood when there's lots of rain, but... At least the land gets some extra water. Five years ago, when the Imperial Army attacked Garag Mach, they moved with incredible speed. But in the middle of all that chaos, she still had operatives watching. The hero of Daphne's spy network is impressive. She shouldn't be taken lightly. We can predict what the Empire will do. Fargus is our real problem. The Eastern Lords have joined forces and are warring with the Dukedom. But I've heard nothing about that conflict as of late. It's strange. I haven't heard much from my father either. I can't help but find this silence unsettling. Uh, so Lady Rhea was in the Empire all this time. Glad as I am that Judith told us. I wish we had known this five years ago. We spent all that time spread out over Fodlan, searching for the Archbishop and you. It was a mistake to abandon the monastery, to leave it in ruins. Now we're paying for that mistake. side of the Great Bridge of Murden lies the territory of Acheron of the Alliance, and to the south, the Empire's Burglies territory. Count Burglies has held the position of Minister of Military Affairs for the Empire ever since the days of Emperor Ionius. The current Emperor seems to have brought the corrupt nobility to heal, but Count Burglies looks to be an exception. What used to be Iyer territory lies far to the east of the Great Bridge of Murden downstream of the Aramid River. For the sake of my family, I wish we could invade the Empire from there. But I do not have the power to advocate for that. Strategically, Murden is more important. Thank you, Professor. I will not give in. Not until I have restored my noble pride. Hello there. The year 1185 is almost over. From next month on, it will be the year 1186. It's just a date, of course, but it feels significant. I hope next year is a great one.
Wendell, whom we saw at Ayala, was once a renowned general known as the Grey Lion. And yet, as we fought him, it seemed like he was just looking for a place to die. Even if House Roe, whom he served, is no more, he shouldn't have just given up on life. We're going to invade the Empire, which means we'll be fighting people we know, won't we? If we're attacked by someone we know or used to think of as a friend, is it permitted to run away? Really? If something happens, will you keep me safe? there, Professor. Did you need something from me? It doesn't look like you're wounded or anything. Are you just looking for someone to talk to? I thought so. Well, I'm here for you. Making you feel better is my top priority. Whether it's physical pain or worries of the heart, you can come to me for anything, Professor. The battle at ALL was a tactical marvel. You grow stronger with each passing day. Where does your talent end and your crest's power begin? Are they one and the same, I wonder? Most intriguing. Yet, it is quite difficult to draw useful conclusions given the situation. It is quite unfortunate I did not achieve my research goals before the war broke out. So much unknown. Now, I fear I will not have those answers even by conflict's end. So very frustrating. Hello. If Rhea really is in the Empire, then we must defeat the Imperial Army by any means necessary. The people at large are just as concerned for Rhea's safety as we are. The sooner we can settle all our unease, the better. Next we face the Great Bridge of Murden. We actually crossed it a long time ago. Do you remember? It was five whole years ago. It seems like so long ago, doesn't it? It's odd how fast time flies. Everyone was still friends then. After the fighting, we all ate together without splitting into our separate houses. I often wish we could go back to those peaceful days. Well, legend says that pillars of light fell and ravaged Aelel. I was reminded of that when I saw it. Um, Professor? Do you think those legends are true? I think so, too. I don't know if the Goddess really destroyed the Valley out of anger, but there are still so many things we don't understand in this world. Right, right. Hearing that the Knights of Saros have returned, the monks have also been coming back. We still don't have enough hands here, but we'll use all that we've got to rebuild the monastery. Until the day that Lady Rhea is returned to us, we have to do all we can. Uh, is it true Lady Rhea was dragged off by the Imperial Army? I heard that was true. Why'd they take Lady Rhea? Professor, they didn't take her to kill her, did they? Yeah, good point. If they did, we'd have heard about it by now. You gotta help her, Professor. I'm begging you. This is for me? Thanks! This is for me?
That was easy thanks to you. <laughs> I could get used to this. I that was I knew I could get it. Oh, thanks, Professor. That's really nice of you to say. I've... Oh, I'll get the next one, too. Finally, I notched a win against you. True, it was a narrow victory. When we spar, I feel like I'm revisiting my past. It's like training with my brother. He always won, always, and died before I could win a single bout. From the first time I held a sword, all I wanted was to surpass him. And that's what drove me to become so strong. Perhaps it's absurd to say such a thing, but I've spent all these years training for a duel with a corpse. Yes, I suppose I did. I can never again spar with my brother, not unless he climbs out of his grave. Still. I continue my endless pursuit of strength. Maybe because I have a new opponent to measure myself against. You, obviously. I beat you this time, but when we next cross swords, who knows what might happen. It was a close match, not a crushing victory. I know that I can do better. I will surpass you in strength, and then I'll become stronger still. And then, when this war is over, I won't have as many chances to swing my sword. I can hardly imagine that. Anyway, thank you for helping me find an answer to the question you asked all those years ago. interesting way of looking at life. Ah, it is you. Just at the right time. There is something I wanted to discuss. Something about you. I am starting to believe that you are a true hero. You hold the lost crest, you wield the sword of the creator, and you lead everyone in battle against great enemies. 
Not only that, but you are a strategist. You stand alongside rulers, supporting them, advising them. You do not seem particularly ambitious, and yet you accomplish so much. I am not exaggerating. Everything I said is true. I have been reading about the history of Fargus, you know. The kingdom's founder, Lug, the king of lions, had two advisors. One of them was Pan, the undesiring strategist. According to historical records, Pan wanted nothing for himself. He devoted himself entirely to Lug. He had tremendous power, but he never seemed concerned about his legacy. So in the old chronicles, there is hardly any mention of Pan's deeds. All that we know is that he helped Lug, his friend and leader. It is not surprising that you have never heard of him. I did not even know his name until recently. But when I watch how you conduct yourself, I feel that I am seeing the unknown deeds of Pan. It is only a thought, of course, but it makes me feel rather happy. Even if it is not in the pages of a history book, a life can be full of achievement. I know that I will never prevail over Edelgard. Even if I defeat her on the battlefield, I am what I am. Like you and this undesiring strategist, I will do what I am called to do, even if no mark of me remains in the history books. It's been ten years. Can I move on yet? <sighs> Never mind. I know what you'd say. I was just thinking about someone I used to know. Another mercenary I fought alongside. They were killed ten years ago when Dagda was in conflict with the Empire. It's all I can focus on lately. To be honest, I blame you. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it's not your fault. You just remind me of him. You give off a similar air. It's uncanny. You even have the same inflection, which makes no sense because we only ever spoke Dagden. I don't know what it is, but you feel the same to me. I guess you just remind me of the past. Eh, that's fair. It's not your fault. It's my fault for getting caught up in memories. Still, you always remember your first love, right? That's enough of that. There are more relevant topics to discuss. Good question. The world is completely open to me. Your next move seems apparent. But who knows where I'll end up. Though I may have done enough traveling for one lifetime. I like the idea of having a permanent home. And after all my time here, I've grown quite fond of Fodlan. Huh, your muscles are looking a little bigger than usual, Raphael. I've been training since dawn, so they better be bulging. I'm feeling hopeful. Well, let's put our hearts into it. That was fun, but I guess we could have done better. As they say, you win some, you lose some. We'll do better next time. I'm feeling good about this. I am getting to the heart of it. I work to grow. I'm just not there yet.
Catherine's working hard. I guess even the strongest fighters can't neglect their training. At it again? Or is she still at it? Oh, a spectator. If you want to ogle, you ought to be a little less conspicuous. Sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. I was just passing by. I couldn't help but wonder, though. Have you been training all this time? Yes. I'm simulating prolonged combat. Fighting for a long time requires a whole different set of skills. If you can't handle it in training, you'll certainly be doomed against the real thing. I can't even imagine having what it takes to keep that up for so long. You've been in your share of battles. I'm sure you have some sense of what it takes. A brutal, protracted clash in open marshland, neither side retreating. In that situation, what will you do? Your survival depends on decisions you make in the moment. I see why you're so successful. Most importantly, don't give up. Don't start thinking about how you might lose or might die. Focus on surviving, on winning. You're right. I've been narrow-minded. I decided, since I don't have a crest and can't use relics, that I'm powerless against someone like you. But that's wrong. I'm not helpless. Not as long as I'm breathing and on my feet. So, the first thing I'm going to do is learn how to beat you. When you're unarmed, at least. That's the spirit, Leone. Though I'm not planning on losing either, you know. Good. I hope you're ready. Because I'm going to train even harder than you. You remind me of myself when I was young. I would become so angry at my own weakness. I feel strangely nostalgic seeing that same anger in you. Uh, huh? Where'd that girl go? We start tomorrow! I'll give it a try.
Guide me well. At the rest. What's my strategy? Shall we? Make a difference. Shall we? Steady now. Thanks. Leave it to me. Oh, nice. Die hard. But it's you or me. Not quite what I'd hoped for.
sorry, but I must. Apologies. Appreciate it. I'm stronger than before. You defeat me, left. No chance. Took too much effort. Got yourself killed. Thanks for from the top. But it's you or me. I won't allow it.
Nothing like a moment of perfect stillness. Why is it preferable to have stillness? <laughs> Petra? Please don't sneak up on me like that! Oh, you're here too, Professor? What's going on? I was asking my question first. What are you enjoying about air that is still? Um, still air makes me feel better, that's all. It means you're in a nice, closed-off space where you can hide. But spaces that are wide and open are wonderful. Places like forests and oceans. Guess we'll have to agree to disagree about that. I am not understanding your answer. But I am appreciating your explanation. I am reminded. I was wanting to ask if you wish to be going to the forest or ocean with me. Um, what? What part of anything I said would make you think I wanted that? So, your grandfather is in trouble. He's trying to lend us soldiers from Bridget, but... Edelgard is sending messengers there to convince Bridget she's not their enemy. You are saying messengers, but the truth is they are a threat. Bridget is having no power to refuse. I get it, but what does this have to do with me? Professor was asking this of me. I was told, if I am going to a faraway place, to be taking Bernie with me, since she is hiding away. What? Professor? What did I do to deserve this? I know I'm a recluse, but I do go out on missions once in a while. You say that, but I don't think I'm ready for this. Bernie, I'm wanting this as well. Please, join me. Since you put it that way, Petra, I'll think about it. Do you really want me to go, Professor? All right, I'll lend a hand, for everyone's sake. What is the point of lending a hand? Are you not needing both of them to battle? What? No, it's a figure of speech. Oh, don't make me imagine that. I'll give it a try.
strength, the enemies may be winning. But I am having an idea. I have been hearing that my friends are being imprisoned in the Western Stronghold. We will be taking the Stronghold and releasing our allies. Do not let loose your hope. Oh, what? That side's crawling with enemies! We should go east! Way fewer of them over there! I do this for all of us. Oh, nice! Sorry. Leave it to me. I'll do my best. What's my strategy? Make a difference. Shall we? Steady now. Make this quick. I've got no time for mercy. Can't afford to lose. They're ready. <laughs> you got yourself killed. Shall we?
I will be there. going to plan. Thanks for that. We're all desperate, aren't we? More battles means more strength. She's catching up to me. That helps. I will not die yet. <sighs> Guess I need to train harder. Can't afford to slack off. No time to slow down. I aspire to be my best. Sorry. Oh! 
this is for the best, right? So wait forward. I'm really gaining confidence. That's another one. of the stronghold has been completed our friends from the stronghold will soon be aiding us in battle appreciate it.
must keep going. Reinforcements are ready. Let us attack with each other. There's a way forward. I'm sorry. I must keep going. No chance.
Well, well, well. This little diplomatic errand to Bridget just got interesting. It seems we have some special guests. Capture the road ahead before they reach it. If they are blocking the road, I will not have the ability to be seeing my grandfather. They must be moving quickly. I will prevail. Steady now. So nice of you. Shall we? My orders? Did the trick. Do this for all of us. I'll do my best. At the ready. Let's make this quick. Good form. What's my strategy? Must lead them well. I fully grasped this topic. I took care of it. I want to do my part.
Leave it to me. Bridget is a vassal of the Empire. You will not turn them against us. But it's you or me. I still have a long way to go. make a difference.
That was amazing. Hold me back. Guard down. Guess I've got that down. Fun to watch. Leave it to me. Thanks so much. Inspiring. Let's make this quick. Steady now. Well done. Appreciate it. You're too kind. Thank you. Let's make this quick. Shall we? Apologies. Oh. I needed that. 
Thank you. I do this for all of us. <laughs> Go on and scream if it makes you feel better. But if you could die swiftly and without a struggle, I would greatly appreciate it. I will prevail. So, Princess of Bridget. Now we see where your loyalties truly lie. This. After we spared your life in return for naught but your beauty. How ungrateful. Ten years have been passed. The Empire has been changed. Just as Bridget has. At the ready. Do my best. Remember your orders. I must withdraw. My orders? Steady now. Leave it to me. Got yourself killed.
More battles means more strength. Time for a secret scheme. We're all desperate, aren't we? It is done. Now I can be meeting my grandfather. We must be moving with haste. Finally over? Whew. All right, let's get out of here. This isn't exactly, um, the ideal environment for a recluse, you know? I will be speaking with my grandfather. Once he is convinced, I will be returning. Professor, everyone, please be waiting here. Enemies may still be nearby. Got it. We'll wait right here. And if anyone comes, um, the professor will handle it. Right, professor? vegetation around here is pretty different from the kinds we usually see. It may be no good for a recluse, but the forest does have its own charms, doesn't it? Sure do! Especially the carnivorous ones! Yes! They just sit there nice and still and wait for their dinner to come to them! How great is that? And they all look so unique, too! What? Don't you think so? Oh, look! Petra's back! Sorry to be making you wait. I have spoken with him. It's been a long time since you've seen your grandfather, huh? How'd it go? As is usual, my grandfather was well and strong. He was saying that he will be supporting us and giving us troops. That's great! So we did it? We did. You have my thanks. Ever since we were losing the war to the Empire, Bridget has been viewed as a vassal state. But with Fodlin at war, it is a chance for Bridget to be changing our situation. Our cooperation today is part of that chance. Bridget is wanting equality with Fodlin. We will be working hard to make this happen. Huh. Bernie? What is it you are feeling? You're amazing, Petra. You went all by yourself to a foreign country? You worked hard for your homeland, and you achieved your goal. I'm always focused on my own problems, and I barely ever get anywhere. That is not the truth. You were fighting hard for me. You came here to be helping everyone. You were not thinking only of yourself. I am never doubting that you are working hard. We will be working together to keep moving forward to the future. You... 
really mean it? That's so nice! Here you are, Teach. Take a look at this. I found it in Rhea's room. It's addressed to you. Well, I know it's not necessarily fair to Rhea, but there's no way I wasn't gonna take a look. I thought I might find some valuable information. Or even some treasures that could be useful for the coming war. In the end, all I found was that letter. I obviously couldn't read it before you did. Go ahead, I'm sick with curiosity. Dear child, I have little time and so I will keep this brief. I asked you to take care of things should something happen, but I wish to make myself useful as well. I left a treasure at the holy tomb. Please take it. However, note that I set a bit of a trap to prevent thieves from stealing it. Please take ample precautions so that you are not harmed when you retrieve it. May Sothis protect you. Rhea. Her handwriting is messy. She must have written it right before that battle five years ago. That treasure. If it belongs to Rhea, there's no doubt that it has great value. It would be bad if some thief managed to sneak off with it. Let's go and get it, Teach. Great. But... There's a trap there that might injure us? Huh. Just to be safe, there's a friend I'd like to invite as well. After all, who knows what lies ahead. the look of this. See potential.
There's something there. Are those the devices that Rhea warned us about? Those are the phantoms. And some of them are giving orders. Let's target those first. Shall we? Never let your guard down. At the ready. We're all desperate, aren't we? More cards for my sleeve. Let's go. for Lady Rhea. This still isn't good enough. Leave it to me. Let's make this quick. Guide me well. Onward. Apologies. Shall we? Appreciate it. Steady now. Apologies. Destiny unfurls. You're relentless. Appreciate it. My orders? What's my strategy? I'll do my best. Defeat me, left. I can feel it in my bones. Giant monsters. And it would be best to take care of whoever's controlling them straight away. I'm hurt, but I'm with you.
That helps. Appreciate that. That helps. I fight and grow stronger, only natural. Defeat me, left.
that's what you get. Thank you. Let up. At the ready. I fought and won. That truly really helped. Did the trick.
making progress. They may be phantoms, but they can still be harmed. Let's take out the other commanders. No mercy. There's a way forward. I feel a little stronger. Thank you. 
assist you. Now. Train harder. I'm feeling good about this. Maybe this will help me keep steady.
Sorry. Ah. Oh, lovely. Ever so grateful. I'll help too. Good time for a secret scheme. We're all desperate, aren't we? Her enemies are my enemies. Sorry, but I must. You're relentless. Never let your guard down. Many things. That helps.
did the trick. Exceed this. Giant monsters can still move, but they seem much weaker now. We should be able to finish them. Thank you.
predictable success. Train harder. Ernie's just no good. Found strength in adversity. For now, I'll revel in my achievement. Looks like we made it through the madhouse. So, where's this treasure that Rhea mentioned? We finally found it. This must be the treasure? Uh, let's get out of here and take a look. Grief. Rhea's trap was more extensive than I expected. Could something like that really be a result of sorcery alone? I don't understand the structure at all. It certainly wasn't made quickly. I think so. That trap may have been built into the holy tomb when it was first constructed. In which case, there might have been another purpose for building it. Other than just as a saint's tomb. Now I have even more questions for Rhea. I hope we reunite with her soon. However, we now have a salvaged treasure. It might be something incredible. The church kept some of the legendary weapons that were blessed by the goddess. This isn't something one just stumbles across. Anyway, it was entrusted to you, Teach. Do what you will with it. My curiosity has been satisfied for the time being. So maybe I'll return to my responsibilities.
<laughs> it was only a trifle. I've... This... Time wasn't wasted. Don't stop. Keep it coming. to learn. I've learned a thing or two from battle. So, I was right. You're too kind. <laughs> now I'm feeling a bit shy. I was just considering paying you a visit. Thank you. forward to the next battle. They seem to go smoothly under your command. No. That was delicious. Thank you. I'll visit again when I'm free. I will be devoting myself to this task as long as I have strength to be sparing. Wow. Um, I think I'll just stand back and cheer for you, Petra. This isn't a job for me anyway. There is no use in arguing. I will not be letting you get away. We did it! I'll do my best with this. 
How best to use this skill? There is always more to learn. I still have much to learn. Thanks so much. You're a sweetheart. You'll get your money's worth. Do you have an itch back there? I guess you can't scratch it on your own, can you? Hi, Marianne. <gasps> oh, Claude. It's just you. Sorry, I know you're in the middle of an important discussion with Dorte, but could I talk to you? About what? It's about this thing you think you're burdened with. I've tried to guess what it is. Please don't. This is making me a little uncomfortable. There's no reason to feel uncomfortable. It's not like I plan on saying it aloud. But if my guess is correct, there's something I want to tell you. Will you hear me out? Fine. I will listen. Once upon a time, in a faraway place. What the... Are you telling me a story? Just listen. Once upon a time, in a faraway place, there was a young boy. This boy came from a despised lineage. In short, his mother was a daughter of the enemy. So the young boy was treated horribly by everyone around him. He hadn't done anything wrong. Everyone hated him simply for existing. Yelling, fighting back, explaining himself. Nothing he did could change his situation. When he was finally old enough, he ran far away from home. He escaped. It sounds to me like he had no choice. I would have done the same had it been me. 
Thing is, after he ran away, he still found himself in the very same position. People in the outside world hated him for where he came from. Well, now that's... The boy thought he had no place to go. All he could do was destroy the boundary between the inside and the outside worlds. Destroy the boundaries? Right. If there was no outside and inside, just one side to share, then the people outside wouldn't have a reason to hate him anymore, right? It wouldn't be easy, but if he managed it, he could shrug off that burden. The point is, people are born with burdens to carry. That much is undeniable. But whether they bind us or we cast them aside, that's up to us. So I think you should try to cast yours aside, Marianne. Put that heavy burden down. It's time. But I... I don't know if I can do it. It's okay. I'm here for you. We're the same, and I can help you. The same? <laughs> Claude, we have nothing in common. Hey, did you see that, Dorte? Your friend just smiled at me. Thank you for sharing your story. I suppose I could try casting a side burden, as you say. We can try together. Let's do that. And when we're free, we can change the whole world. <laughs> Hello, Ingrid. A good day to you. Well, hello there. If it isn't Claude, always a pleasure. You put in a fine performance in training today. I must redouble my own efforts. <laughs> That's kind of you to say. By the by, do you have a moment to spare? I have been meaning to ask for your input on some new strategies. Oh, goodness. Only if you think someone as lowly as myself might be of service. But of course, I value your skills more highly than most any other. Oh, goodness. Okay, time out. Listen, Ingrid, do you really have to say, oh, goodness, every couple of seconds? What do you expect? Speaking to me as you were, I only responded in kind. What? Do I sound that strange? I thought I was acting earnest and industrious. I mean, yes, you do. You sound nothing short of ridiculous. Sheesh. Have you looked in a mirror lately? You're the one who's been walking around like queen uptight. Excuse me? I'll admit it was a bit forced, but it certainly doesn't warrant such a title. Uh, look, this was fresh and fun for a while, but uh, maybe it's time we called it quits. Acting like this isn't us. We're just going to make everyone think we've gone mad. I agree. I must say, I have an easier time getting on with you when you're you, and all your you-ness. Come to think of it, You've always been more reliable than most anyone I know, when it really mattered. <laughs> well, thanks for saying that. I think I liked you better when you were a bit pricklier, too. I've gone so long without hearing one of your lectures, I'm almost starting to miss them. I'm sure I can remedy that for you. Uh, I didn't mean you need to go all out or anything. A little restraint would still be nice. My lectures, as you call them, only persist as long as is necessary. Oh, I think I'm coming down with a stomach ache. We'll talk later, okay? Okay, see ya. You honestly expect me to believe that? Come back here, Claude. Hello, Flane. Isn't it about time you told me the truth? About what exactly? Who you really are. Villains are after you for your blood. There's no doubt that you're someone special. And that's why Sedith is always worrying about you so much, right? Well, yes. I see no reason to hide that fact. But just what makes that blood of yours so special? More than anything, I've been wanting to find out Teach's true identity. But yours is bothering me almost as much. Somehow, I can't seem to stop thinking about you. It's almost like a crush. I have a crush on your secrets, sweet flame. <laughs> Such flattery. I've tried asking Sedith, but there's no sign of him budging on the issue. At this point, I guess I just need better bargaining skills. Or how about this? If you tell me the truth, 
I'll do anything you say. That is not something I am willing to share, unfortunately. However, since you are so passionate on the matter, I will promise you something. What's that? If you somehow manage to uncover the truth of my identity, I will acknowledge it as truth. <laughs> That's real nice of you and all, but I think if I could come up with the truth, I'd be able to tell from your reaction anyway. You're not great at hiding your emotions, after all. If you do somehow figure it out, then I would ask something of you, Claude. I would ask that you reveal your own true identity. <laughs> now that's a request I wasn't expecting. It has been clear to me for quite some time now that you are no ordinary noble. I have been pondering... Well, you, quite a lot lately. The curiosity is enough to drive me mad. I see. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. Looks like we both have a little crush on our hands, huh? I hope the day comes when we can talk freely about both of our identities. Lawrence! Lawrence, look! What is it, Hilda? Ah, a letter from your brother? That's right. Though, part of me thinks it's some stranger imitating my brother's handwriting. He's never given me this much praise. Hilda, you've learnt the value of persistence. You're really maturing, stuff like that. Usually his letters are like, I'm worried about you, and stop being so lazy. Since I have fought by your side, I can assure you that his praise is genuine and entirely deserved. I've written about fighting in plenty of letters. Why is he so gushy this time around? I would venture to guess that your depictions of battle are more passionate than before. It's no surprise that such authenticity would resonate with a veteran warrior like your brother. If that's true, I have you to thank. You've inspired me to throw myself into battle. Does everyone think I'm a tough warrior now? I don't want to be stuck with their high expectations. Would that be so terrible? You are gifted, you know. Not to say that your lackadaisical nature has failed to endear itself to me. I'll choose to take that as a compliment. Speaking of letters, did you keep your promise? Did you, uh, mention me? I did. I told my brother all about you. I said you were a uniquely gifted leader who could inspire people to be their best selves. And I said that you'll be a real asset to the Alliance. I also told him how I wished you could join our family. He responded that he'd be honored to call you his brother. Truly? Oh, to have such a valiant brother would be beyond my wildest expectations. Um, Lawrence? You know what I mean about you joining our family, right? I believe I do. And I confess, if I am correct, that the same thought has preoccupied me as well. But you must forgive me. Now is not the time. Before we can consider our own future, we must first end this war. We must secure a peaceful world. And if we do attain a peaceful world, then what? Come on! Just say it. As much as I'd like to grant that request, I cannot. This is something that will deeply affect our lives. It must be said at the proper time and place, with the most artfully chosen words, and the perfect offering. I am Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, after all. <laughs> I'm not usually one for waiting around, but maybe I'll make an exception in his case. Hey, writing to your sister again? You bet! Gotta reply to these things as soon as they come in. You've had one last week, too. It's great to see you're both so good about staying in touch. It's especially important when there's a war going on. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. My sister wrote to say how much she loved the painting supplies you sent. Good. I'm glad gathering those pigments paid off. You even made her a brush. I really appreciate you doing all that for her. I was fascinated with painting at that age. I was a pretty artistic kid, if you can believe it. Not a lot of time for it when you're hungry, though. Sounds like you had a pretty tough time growing up, too, huh? I guess so. 
We never thought of it that way. But it's true, the children in my village don't usually get to choose their futures. Any one of us could have had the talent for artistic genius and never even noticed. I was one of the lucky ones. I only got to follow my passion thanks to my father and all the other folks. That's why, once I come into my own, the first thing I'll do is head back there and help the other kids. Oh, wow. It's like all the kids in your village are counting on you. <laughs> no need to exaggerate it. Besides, it's not like I'm unique. You're working hard for your sister's future, aren't you? Yeah. It's like me and you are both carrying big weights. We should try sharing the weight with each other. You know, lighten both of our loads. Huh? If we share our problems, then we only got to carry half the weight, right? It works out for everybody. It's probably a good thing you didn't try to take on your family's business. If you take half of my burden and I take half of yours, the total's still the same. Nah, that doesn't sound right. Everything's lighter when you don't got to carry it alone. <laughs> on second thought, you might be right. With the right attitude and the right partner to share the burden, maybe it is only half the weight. Now you're getting it! It's a waste of energy to struggle alone when there's someone who can help you. That's true. And I do hate waste, as you well know. So when it comes to working toward the future you're after, you know I won't fall short. Great! And you should never fall short on sharing a big meal with me, too! <laughs> Deal. Huh. What's that about? Marianne, I saw you on the training grounds earlier. It looked like there was an argument. Oh, no. It was nothing. Are you sure? Nothing happened at this morning's training? Well... Okay. Tell me what happened. I... I just couldn't keep up with the rest of the group. Everyone got so mad at me. They said something about looking into their eyes so I could read their movements. But I couldn't do it. They may have a point. I'm a hindrance to everyone. I just... I can't do it. Of course not. That goes without saying. It's hard to accomplish anything on your own. Look at me. By myself, I'm worse than useless. Can you see where I'm going with this? To succeed, you have to cooperate. You can't do that if you're not paying attention to nonverbal cues. Huh? Please, try looking up. Looking people in the eye. You'll see some things that you've never seen before. People worry about you and rely on you. You'll see that on your allies' faces. In a way, you'll see what they're thinking. You... you may be right. It was my fault for looking down. Thank you, Ignatz. I appreciate your encouragement. Of course. Look, we both saw the sunset and appreciated its beauty. Nature communicates without words. We can do the same. We don't need to speak to be understood. Stop staring at your feet. Look at us. That'll be a good start. I can certainly try. Huh. I is something wrong? Did I say something to upset you? Oh no, to the contrary. I just realized that I was missing something. A thing of remarkable beauty. Right under my nose. Remarkable beauty? Uh, what? Don't mind me. <laughs> Where are you going, Ingrid? Oh, uh, hi. I see you spotted me. Um, saw me. I don't want to disturb you. Don't worry. I just finished my painting of St. Seraph's. Oh, that's wonderful. May I see? Of course. Take a look. Whoa. She looks so different from the other painting. Much more divine and gentle. She looks so real, doesn't she? 
so alive. Perhaps it's boastful for me to say that. Not at all. She really does. She has a glowing vibrancy to her. Looking at this painting, I feel so inspired. I was going to paint her as loving and benevolent, but then I remembered your idea, and I decided to depict her fighting for her people. Really? Actually, now that I look closer, I see her sword is rather large, and she seems to be in a battle stance. That's right. Although, of course, I had to discard some of your more absurd suggestions. I'm sorry about that. No, wait! That's not what I meant. I see that if I open myself up to suggestions from other people, new things become possible. And I have you to thank for that realization. If that's true, I'm very glad I could help. You made a good point. We can't be blinded by our own thought patterns and ideas. It's important to be open to others as well. By doing so, we discover new paths for ourselves, and we can become better in ways we may never have imagined. Exactly. Thank you, Ignatz. You've reminded me of a very valuable lesson. I'm going to strive to be more attentive and listen to other people's ideas. Me too. And I've just had a new idea for a painting. I can't wait to see it. I bet it'll be a masterpiece. <laughs> I've awaited this fated day. You don't change. Still prattling on about it. Aw, oh, come on. I just want to hear what you thought of the cake I gave you. Uh, it was edible. If by edible, you mean incredible, then yes, I agree. It was satisfying and lightweight. I imagine it would be quite useful as a battlefield provision. Please refrain from lumping delectable cake into the same category as provisions. You're upset and I don't understand why. I'm complimenting the cake. You cured my dislike of sweets. For that, I thank you. You have an interesting way of giving compliments, but I'm glad you liked it. Yes. Got any cakes on you? You say that as though I just carry cake on me at all times. Did you want some? That's not what I meant. If you baked a cake, however, I wouldn't object to eating a slice. If cake is what you want, you can just ask me directly. It just so happens I have a brand new recipe I tried out, special for you. It's delicious and not overly sweet. Perfect for you. Okay. Go on, take a bite. Mm. You love it, I can tell. Here, try this one out too. Mm -hmm. See? So amazing, huh? Just keep working on that sweet tooth of yours. Then we can share cake notes together and eat cake together all the time. That is, it just sounds nice is all. Mm? Oh, okay. That does sound nice. Hilda! Lovely as ever. I swear, when you're around, the sun shines brighter and everything sparkles. Sylvain, you're looking superb as always. Thank you. Are you going out today? If you do, then be careful. I'd hate to think you might hurt your foot again. My foot? Oh, yes! You mean that time you helped me with the books? <laughs> no need to worry, the foot's fine now. Even better than it was before. I noticed, you know, since I'm always looking at cute girls, and you are one of the cuter ones. Your foot was better during the battle. You were running all over, just a regular warrior princess. And less than a day after such a terrible injury. My friends were depending on me, so I just had to fight through the pain. Hilda, please don't lie to me. I knew your foot wasn't really hurt, but I returned your books anyway. Take it from a guy who does his fair share of pretending to be someone he's not. And I say this as a friend, you are a terrible liar. And those books you left in your room for so long? Teachers and classmates needed those. 
So stop lying, and maybe stop being quite as selfish, too. <laughs> you saw right through me. Honestly, I'd completely forgotten that I still had those books. I really was going to return them. Did the librarian say anything to you? Oh, yeah. I got an earful of yelling and accusations meant for you. Huh? Didn't you just say it was my fault? Nah, I figured the librarian would feel better if they just let loose. No reason to make them wait for you. I'm so sorry. You got a tongue lashing that should have been directed at me. Tell you what, all will be forgiven if you promise three things. Stop lying, take responsibility, and fall madly in love with me. Aw, Sylvain, I do love you, you know? I just wouldn't want you for a husband. What? Why not? Well, not to offend you, but I can't help but feel that your niceness is somehow shallow. My brother would probably cut you into pieces the moment he saw your face. Your brother sounds... Uh, terrifying, actually. We're losing the thread a bit here. Evidently, you can see through my act, so I'll just be straightforward about taking advantage of you. <laughs> well, I'll take what I can get. Just don't go causing trouble for guys who aren't me. It's a deal. Goodbye for now, Sylvain. <laughs> Hey. Hey, Leone. I mean, hello, beautiful. What brings a sweet girl like you to a place like this? Uh, I just came to the greenhouse to look at flowers. What's with you? Nothing much. Nothing much. I was just thinking about how sunflowers don't deserve to be stuffed away in a greenhouse. They bloom better out in the open, just like you. Could you cut the weird metaphors and just say what you want to say? Oh, wait. I get it. I'm not ladylike enough to fit in with all the pretty flowers. No! Okay, that compliment backfired. Let me try a different angle. This is a joke, right? Tell me this is a joke. What have you got against sunflowers anyway? I think they're lovely myself. If you think I only care about delicate flowers raised in a greenhouse, you've got me all wrong. Statuesque sunflowers, blooming proud and tall in the open air, have a beauty all their own. Is that right? You better believe it. And the same goes for you. You have a beauty unlike any other. I look at you and I see sunflowers. Hmm? Uh, look, can you just go back to normal? At this point, I feel like anything I say is just going to make you more angry. Why are you suddenly not capable of carrying on a normal conversation? My eyes have been opened to the charms of the beautiful flower blooming right beside me. It's a whole new day for my heart. You can quit messing with me at any time. I'm not. I'm absolutely serious. You really are as charming as any flower. I see that now. Would you stop? This is getting weird. Even sincerity doesn't work? What kind of flirting is going to satisfy you? You know what? I'm just going to leave you alone for now, so I can get a fresh start some other time. Right. Bye. Charming? Me, of all people. Like I'd actually believe that. <sighs> Stupid.
next. How about a curtsy? Make a difference. That smell, mm, it's amazing. My fave, in fact. Do you like it too? Ooh, <laughs> I love this stuff. Did you know that? I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. This is a wonderful dish. You could sell this in any restaurant in the capital. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. This is my absolute favorite. How did you know, Professor?
eating delicious food really takes my worries away. This is so good. Can I have seconds? Give my compliments to the chef. Delicious. After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. Delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. The flavor is nostalgic to me for some reason. Hmm, I'd like some more. dish. It was my father's favorite. This looks delicious. Let's eat. Others is a nice change of pace. Usually I do it when I'm alone. Singing is so much fun. Everyone should enjoy themselves while they're doing it. Perseverance is the key. Need something? This one? You're all set. See you again soon. The Great Bridge of Murden is in sight. Beyond it, the Empire. What do you know? There aren't bridges that big in Elmira, that's for sure. How unsettling. There are bridges in the southern part of Rodelia territory, but nothing like this. It's the most strategic location in that area to move a large army across the Aramid River. The Empire will want to hold on to it at all costs, so expect tough defenses. You're right. The defenses are pretty impenetrable. Let's make our move carefully. You're in command, Teach. Do whatever it takes to win. Well, other than sacrificing the lives of our allies for the sake of victory, try to avoid that. Let's get moving. We're counting on you, my friend.
Hey, Claude. I think I've worked out what your lyrics mean. Care to hear me out? Huh? Sure. So, you managed to work through the labyrinth of my melodic poetry, then? I did. You were writing about yourself, right? About how you just keep moving forward, no matter what difficulties you encounter? We've got this, we did it, now let's eat. That kind of thing. Am I right? Hey, that's pretty close for being completely wrong. It's actually not about me. It's about you, Annette. It's a song about your single-minded march through life. It's about me? Of course. You know, about how you mess up and make a big fuss about stuff sometimes, but you're always looking ahead and striving. I just wanted to capture your pleasant, fidgety, fussy nature in a song. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I'm flattered. I think... Actually, I can't really tell if you're saying something nice or not. Of course I'm saying something nice. I'm so happy I get to be friends with someone like you. Everyone's really uplifted by your cheerful attitude, your refusal to give up, and that boisterous nature of yours. Ha! <laughs> boisterous! That's definitely not a compliment. <laughs> Still, thank you, Claude. I'm really pleased that you thought so hard about me and wrote a neat song like that. You know... What this song really needs is a nice little dance to go with it. I couldn't agree more. And once you've finished, you should perform it for everyone. You're a fine dancer after all. Nope, not happening. I'm afraid my dances are not for public consumption. It will have to suffice that I let you see it. Uh, you drive a hard bargain. And if this performance is just for me, maybe I can coax you into letting me hear some of your other songs? I suppose there are a few others I could maybe share, like my bear song, or my dungeon song, Ooh, or the Waltz of the Swamp Beasties. <laughs> I have never been more on board with anything in my entire life. Oh, they're all just silly songs. I don't know that they're anything worth being excited about. I'll be the judge of that, and I can tell just by their descriptions that I'm right to be excited. Well, I guess I have no choice. I'm making an exception just for you, Claude. I'm honored to be the exception, as well as your number one fan. Oh, you're still here? Lysithia, hi. Did you forget something? I did. What are you reading? Just something I found, though there are things in here I don't quite get. Is that the Compendium of Light and Dark? It is! Amazing how you could tell that just from a glance at the cover. I've read it so many times, I have nearly the entire thing memorized. That said, it does seem to take liberties with some topics, so be aware of that while you're reading it. Wait, really? Yikes. Thanks for the warning. You've got quite the stack of books here for only wanting to brush up on one thing. I knew you were a hard worker, Annette. No, not as much as some people. I'm... Oh, sorry. There I go again. It's all right. In getting to know you, I've taken some time to self-reflect. I used to think that I worked harder than anyone. But I'm not so sure anymore. I have to work even harder to keep pace with you. Oh no, but then I'll have to work extra, extra hard to keep up with you. Well, if you work extra, extra hard, I'll need to work super duper extra hard. Oh, come on. Fine, super duper quadruple extra hard it is. Okay, okay, that's enough. We could do this forever, but we've got better things to do. <laughs> Sorry. It's fun to see you get carried away like that, though. I'm glad we had this chat. I feel excited to continue working super duper extra hard now. <laughs> I'm lucky to have someone like you around to inspire me. <laughs> I feel the same. I'll do my best to keep pace with you. Why are you smiling? Oh, it's nothing. I was just thinking about how nice it is that we can motivate each other like this. It is nice, isn't it? But I still intend to surpass you. Nuh-uh, I'm gonna surpass you. But before that, uh, could you explain this part of the book to me? 
I'm not quite sure how someone of your caliber is struggling with this one, but let me break it down for you. Oh dear, I'm thirsty again. If only I had a drink. I have some tea. You are welcome to drink some. Oh dear, I forgot to get my... I found it. Here it is. Oh dear, I didn't return my library book. I returned your book a little while ago. Oh, thank you. Ferdinand, how did you get so good at doing things for me? It's like you know what I need before I do. I have lots of practice fielding your requests. All I need to do is think for a bit, and I know what you need. I can practically read your mind. Oh, you know what it's like in here, huh? Okay, tell me what I'm thinking about right now. Hmm, you want a snack. Sorry, nice try. Actually, I was thinking... I've become quite fond of you. I suppose that is inevitable. I am rather fond of you as well. I find your laziness endearing. Hey, the fond thing was just a joke. Really, I was thinking about tea. Kind of thirsty. I admire you, Hilda. You what? I said I admire you. You are gifted and accomplished. I used to underestimate you. I said I was kidding, didn't I? This is all a bit... You feign sloth to obscure the considerable breadth and depth of your talents. Such delicate discretion. Such noble prudence. If only I could emulate it. I've never been called prudent before. But I like hearing you say it. Thank you. You're good at giving compliments. In return for all your help, I promise that I'll keep being prudent. I appreciate that. Shall we go? Huh? Go where? I thought you wanted some tea. The dining hall is the place for that. Oh, Ferdinand, you're too kind. Today was a great day for fishing, wasn't it? It was, though I did lose to you in numbers. You won on size, though. Some of these fish are huge. And it was you who caught this beauty. It is a lovely specimen. The fins are rather like wings, and the scales are reminiscent of a lustrous rainbow. But I have heard this type of fish does not taste good. It's a little bland, but it's not bad. You just need to fry it in oil to bring the flavor out. There are lots of little bones, too, so you need to be careful eating it. You truly are an expert, Leone. I would be delighted if you would cook for us again. Happily. You know, once this war's over, I'll be able to make even more elaborate dishes. I'm sure none of it will compare to your wife's cooking, though. Entirely different styles. I very much look forward to seeing what you come up with. Yet another reason to end this war swiftly. <laughs> I'm flattered, but that doesn't seem like a good motivation to fight. On the contrary, it is better than the usual reasons. In the heat of battle, it is little details like a friend's cooking that I reach for to find my courage. <laughs> I have to say, I didn't expect that from you. You're always so serious. But I really value our fishing time, too. With all the chaos, it's great to have a way to relax. I hope there will come a time when we can fish like this without worry, to our heart's content. Hope's not enough. We need to build that future with our own hands. Agreed. But even after that is done, you had better not rest idle. I've grown quite fond of your cooking. <laughs> Don't worry. There's plenty more where that came from. Speaking of, time to handle today's haul. Let me lend you a hand.
Sight said on the Imperial capital, the Alliance Army chooses to march through the territory of House Gloucester, supporters of the Empire. Under the command of Nardell, the retainer of House Regan, the defensive forces of Houses Regan and Daphnel draw out the Gloucester troops. Thus, the Alliance Army can continue its march toward the Great Bridge of Murden and cross the Aramid River, which separates the Alliance and the Empire. See potential.
That symbol. It's an enemy raid. Stay calm and face them head on. Send a messenger to Acheron immediately. If we're quick, we might be able to pull off a pincer attack. They say the enemy general, Ladislava, is among Edelgard's most trusted. Let's see what she's got. Our goal is to take down Ladislava and gain control of the bridge. Let's go. Let's make this quick. At the ready. What's my strategy? Guide me well. Do my best. Shall we? Shall we? Leave it to me. Sorry. My orders? Steady now. Did the trick. Oh, nice. I've got no time for mercy. Fitting outcome. I wasn't about to let you go.
Lament your weakness. That was amazing. This could turn the tides. I'm stronger than before. Slow down. Just like that. Apologies. <laughs> Looks like we can capture this fortress quickly if we take out the soldiers protecting it. Enemies approaching. Get the soldiers standing by to join the fight. We may need to hurry up preparations of the ballista, too. Protect the fortress! Let you take this bridge from us? Whoa, new enemies from the central fortress? By the looks of it, that might not be all of them. more to be done. Time to show your loyalty to the Empire. Attack the enemy from behind! I've got to make my name known to Her Majesty through distinguished service. Acheron the Weathervane. 
He's of the Alliance. He's a minor noble who holds territory to the north of Murden. If he's gonna support the Empire, no need to hold back. He's nothing but a nuisance, even to the Alliance. Got no time for mercy. Goddess, forgive me. Destiny unfurls. You're incredible. No chance. The declining alliance will be finished if I kill you. The Empire will herald the new age. Only if you manage to kill me. Hmm? What's that to the north? Looks like the home of another opportunistic noble is burning. That's... that's my castle! No! That's the declining alliance at work right there. Seems like you were facing the wrong way, Weathervane. Never should have aligned with the Empire. The weak fall, the strong live. It won't be in vain. We'll ally ourselves with the Imperial soldiers, too. Thanks for making your way here. Annihilate the enemy with the rest of them!
a curtsy. I'll keep pushing myself. Impressive. I can help. Now's our chance. This could turn the tides. Not my best. allowed. I can feel it in my bones. Can't afford to slack off. We still have a long way to go. Can't find work. I'll do my best.
Gerald. Not what I was hoping for. I must lead them well. Well done. Another victory. Won't be in vain. Another victory. secret scheme.
Thank you. stronger hey look at you I fought and won Thanks so much. It won't be in vain. No mercy. I'm really getting the hang of this.
to repay Her Majesty's favor, I will not let you pass. All is fair in war. That's Progress. Time for mercy. Even know I cared this much. Just a hindrance. Come on. Destiny unfurls. Ah, you did it. Could turn the tides.
this. Master disability. I must pull through. I'll assist you. It's time. victory. Protect the Great Bridge. What's my strategy? Allow me to demonstrate! I must lead them well. Decent form. Still room for improvement. Thank you. 
Lady Edelgard. I'm sorry. A predictable success. <sighs> I'm glad we defeated them here. I doubt they're an enemy we could win against twice. Well done, everyone. The Great Bridge of Muradin is ours. I was prepared for bloodshed, but that was more than expected. I guess I'm still not used to this. Even our enemies were fighting for their own cause. They held out without fleeing until the bitter end. That is true. I wouldn't want to become the type of person who feels nothing when someone dies. Now it's on me to return to Alliance territory and convince those lords to join us. Lawrence, would you return home for the time being and lay the groundwork with your father? Fine. After all, this is for the Alliance. Or rather, for all of Fodlan. For those of you who live in Alliance territories, I ask that you return to your houses and spread the word about the current situation. Until we finish our preparations, Judith and the Knights will do everything in their power to defend the Great Bridge. <laughs> That's a casual way to dole out such a deadly mission, boy. Do you object? Just who do you think I am? I won't let the Empire pass this way, even if it costs me my life. Too bad you're not allowed to die. Fight like your life depends on it, but flee if you're ever truly in danger. A tall order, as always. <laughs> I'll use my best discretion, Claude. We have no objections either. Go forth and secure us a sufficiently powerful army. I'll stay here too. The only ones I'd be going home to are my little sis and my grandpa. Are you sure you don't want to see your sister? It may be a while before you can return home again. But if I see her, I may not want to come back. So I'll wait till I'm done here. Actually, I'd like for you to come with me, Teach, to help negotiate with the Lords. They're followers of the Church of Seros, after all. It'll make things easier if we have someone there to speak on Rhea's behalf. All right, everyone. Let's meet back at the monastery next month. Good luck out there. Is that you, kiddo? <clears throat> I have returned, Nardell. Oh, ah, Master Claude, it's you. I mistook you for one of the local children. My apologies. It seems you have adjusted to your work here. Our recent strategy was successful, thanks to you. I was a bit concerned when House Goneril's army intervened from the east. Count Gloucester must have requested reinforcements from them. Yes, and they have that young general who won some acclaim from his battles in Almira. Regardless, they showed no signs of seriously wishing to attack us, and merely fulfilled their obligations to House Gloucester. Now then, who is this handsome fella? This is my professor, who I asked to join me at the Roundtable Conference. Teach, this is Nardell, that retainer Judith was talking about. How polite! I've heard good things about you from Master Claude. As you can see, he wasn't born in Fodlan. Still, trust me when I say he is highly capable. True! In fact, my capability is my only redeeming quality. I hope you'll continue to look after Master Claude, Professor. <laughs> 